Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. My name is Ashley Bryan. I'm the Youth and Schools Coordinator here at Bookmarks. Um, it is a beautiful day in North Carolina, and we are so glad that you have made the decision to join us because we have a very exciting afternoon planned. Um, we are here with Laura Elliott and Barbara Long, who are going to share. Um, well, let me let me back up for a minute. Uh, if you are not familiar with Bookmarks, we are a uh, literary arts nonprofit and independent bookstore located in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Um, our mission is to provide books with purpose, and part of why we're here today is to share with you Storm Dog, um, which is written by L.M. Elliott. Uh, she is going to share a little bit. She, you will see her pictured um, with Gracie. <laughs> and then we're going to hear from Barbara Long, who is going to share with us um, some dog training tips and a performance from Ambrose. And Ambrose is sitting here waiting anxiously to show us his his moves. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, please keep things clean. Uh, we uh, have a zero tolerance policy. So if there's anything happening inappropriate, um, I will have to remove you. And this is gonna be such a lovely afternoon. I would hate to do that for anyone. So if you have a question, you can ask at the bottom, if you look at the bottom of your screen or in the chat. And after we hear from both of them, we will um, answer some questions. So if you have a question, pop it on the screen. We will make sure we address it. But before we get started, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a poll. We would love to know who is here today. Are you a dog lover, a dog lover and an owner, or you just like cats? Um, please let us know. We would love to know who is here. And if you have your dog handy, um, please send us some pictures. We would love to see um, who, who you have joining us. But um, with that, Miss Elliot, I'm gonna let you share with us how we got this wonderful book in the first place. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm gonna talk quickly because like all of y'all, I, I wanna see Ambrose and Barbara do their thing. Um, I'm so thrilled to be back at Bookmarks, which is kind of my home away from home. Um, and I'm really thrilled to be talking about Storm Dog. And she, um, Aunt Ashley had shown it to you before. This is a little unusual to me. Um, those of you who have my work from before, I usually write historical or biographical novels like um, Hamilton and Peggy, and this is contemporary and first person narrated by a um, slightly, um, well, a wit smart 14 year old girl named Ariel who needs to find her self definition and sense of belonging. And she does that through the course of the novel through nature, music, um, her own creativity, friendship with an Afghanistan war veteran, uh, a lost dog, dog dancing, and the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Parade. It's a little whimsical, it's a little quirky. Uh, Ariel's journey is definitely a celebration of individuality and self-expression, uh, creative partnership, and differing definitions of beauty. And of course, the joy of having a dog. It's a mixture of many different themes that I'd long been wanting to kind of explore. The idea for Storm Dog came about by my seeing a magazine piece that was about the healing powers of dance. And within that, um, within the photo essay part of it was this picture of this woman with this beautiful golden retriever and they both were pirouetting. And there was a little caption that talked about musical canine freestyle. And I thought, what's that? Um, I was a magazine journal, journalist for almost 20 years before taking this side, what I thought was going to be a side step into writing fiction. Um, and uh, what that had really taught me was to spot a story or a hole in coverage. I've written a lot of feature well, human interest stories, kind of covering women's issues, uh, health and the arts. Uh, and um, so when I saw the dog dancing, I thought, well, that's a story screen to be written. Um, so I also read a lot about military working dogs, uh, MWDs, and had marveled at the fact that these dogs are so incredibly trained and are so brave and so loyal to their handlers that they're willingly parachute out of a plane with them, strapped to their handler. Uh, my father was a World War II veteran, and I'd reported stories about military families and my time at the magazine 
Um, those of um, some of you may know my first novel, which was under War Torn Sky, which is going to be a 24 bomber pilot during the during World War II. Um, and so I really, as more I learned about MWDs, I started wondering what it was like for them, their re-entry into the States, um, and what that was like for them after a tour of combat. Now, as a journalist, I, I would have written a profile. I would have found a Barbara Long and an Ambrose and asked if they would let me follow them through the creation of a routine. So I, we're incredibly lucky, Barbara. Thank you so much for doing this for us today. Um, now, but as a YA fiction writer, I realized that perhaps the most potent and poignant way that I could really write about and showing rather than telling about the um, healing power of creative lab collaboration and the bond between a person and a dog um, might be a story about a troubled girl um, who's finding her way with the help of a canine veteran who's a little bit traumatized herself and because of a dog coming into her life. I should share with you all that my um, first love was music. Um, I actually dreamed once of being a concert flautist or a symphonic orchestra um, conductor. Uh, so I completely believe in the kind of incantational magic of music to elevate us. And as Ariel's brother in this book says, music is kind of an outcry from the soul. And he quotes Thoreau, when I hear music, I fear no danger. I am invulnerable. I did, in fact, march in the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Parade Festival when I was in high school. I am a proud graduate of Wake Forest University. And while I was there, I was field conductor of the Demon Deacons Marching Band. Um, so I know firsthand uh, that for sheer showmanship, camaraderie, and plain old fun, nothing really beats being in a good marching band or marching in a parade. And all my dogs, I hope you saw, Gracie, all my dogs are rescues. So I've experienced how tight the bond is when those dogs come to trust a human being. Again, I never taught a dog to dance, um, but I witnessed kind of this similar extraordinary creative partnership through my daughter, who was a champion equestrian. Uh, she is an inventor, which uh, combines three disciplines, cross country, skating, jumping, and dressage. Um, and it's a sport that requires the rider to really, really know that animal and to work in a partnership and to patiently train and respect what that horse can or cannot do and wants to do. Um, I was able to witness this incredible delight sense of accomplishment she felt. Um, and I also, and the symbiosis between her and her horses. And she had some pony club compatriots who also did musical freestyle in dressage. They're training these 1600 pound animals to sashay and turn and to the beat of music. So I could translate all that to Ariel and Duke. For those of you all who are interested in being a writer, there's nothing ever wasted in your life. Just be watching and listening and life will drop incredible, you know, bits and pieces of stories in front of you. You just kind of have to save string. Um, the last thing I wanted to add before I read, this book is actually dedicated to my much beloved mentor, Dr. Ed Wilson at Wake Forest. Um, who really nurtured my innate uh, love of nature, um, but also taught me to have faith in the sublime through his poetry classes. And that's a theme that definitely courses through this, but we don't have time to talk about that today because we're gonna do dogs, which is so very exciting. Um, I'm gonna read a quick passage. Is Ambrose okay to wait through? He's good, he's waiting to go, but he's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, I have a five minute passage I wanna read to you all that I think kind of sets up um, Barbara and Ambrose and what she's going to talk to you about. Basically, the setup here is um, Ariel is uh, doesn't really belong in her family. Uh, her brother, who loves her and understands her, has been deployed to Afghanistan. Um, her father hasn't really quite been the same since George left. Her mother is completely besotted and absorbed with the older daughter, the gorgeous Gloria, who's just been picked to be a princess in the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Prey. Um, Ariel's had a really bad morning. Um, and she's taken to the foothills of the Blue Ridge um, where she has always found her solace. Storm blows up, and in the midst of that, this lost dog finds her and takes her to the safety of a cabin where she meets Sergeant Josie, who's going to become her friend and kind of protector, and who takes in um, uh, this dog until Ariel can figure out whether she's gonna be able to keep him or not. And Ariel has just discovered the idea of dog dancing, and she's going to talk to uh, Sergeant Josie about it and begin the process of creating a routine 
which begins with figuring out what kind of music the dog actually likes. So, in a torrent of hope, like sunlight spilling through a cloud hole, I jabbered out my storm child crazy idea about dog dancing and the parade. The image of that dog waltzing free and happy, Sergeant Josie liked that a lot. Thought of a name yet, she asked. I shook my head. Maybe the music he likes will tell you will tell you a good one. I started with cellist Yo-Yo Ma and singer Bobby McFerrin performing a lively version of Hush Little Baby because Yo-Yo Ma is a hero of mine being mutual cellists and all. I turned hopefully to the German Shepherd, but he just started barking out the window at a squirrel, changed it to music Daddy loved, I picked Ella Fitzgerald singing Cheek to Cheek. That ballroom dance song had been good enough for Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, probably the most famous dancing pair ever. But the dog lay down and went to sleep. I tried Rufus Wainwright's Hallelujah. Yeah, okay, I did first hear of it in the, mus in the movie Shrek, that movie where even a green ogre can find love and acceptance, which made it a favorite for me. The dog actually snored. So I pumped up the beat and tried something thematic. Who let the dogs out by the Baja men? The German shepherd ro rolled over and sneezed like I'd insulted him. I threw up my hands. Sergeant Josie laughed. Try Pharrell um, Williams is happy. That sure got me up, bebopping around the dog. He didn't move, not a whisper. How is that possible? I decided to try an amazing pianist singer I'd recently discovered who had that whole rattling outcry that George talked about being the expressive magic of music, Alicia Keys. Her wait till you see my smile made the German shepherd sit up like he understood the lyrics and grin at me, but no dance. I switched to Girl Power Anthems, Roar by Katy Perry, Aretha Franklin's Respect, Fight Song by um, Rachel Platten, Defying Gravity from Wicked. His ears twitched and I swear he nodded his head in rhythm like he was thinking right hard on those lyrics, but he was too serious about it all to get up and strut. I flopped into a wicker armchair, feeling totally defeated. I'd run through dozens of songs. I swung my legs up over the, charm, the chair arm and kicked them back and forth. Sergeant Josie didn't reprimand me for it. She also didn't start pushing a bunch of advice at me like most adults would have. Instead, she picked up an old frayed book to read. Now, even though I would have resented her telling me what to do next, I was also annoyed that she wasn't because I was totally out of ideas. What are you reading? I admit my tone was pretty, why aren't you saving me, cranky? Sergeant Josie simply held the book up so I could see Homer's The Odyssey, that ancient epic poem about Odysseus finding his way back to Greece after the Trojan War. I have to read that next year when I'm a freshman, I said. It sounds really boring. Really? She looked up and a bit of a chill ran through me at her expression. You think soldiers trying to find their way back home after a long war is boring? No, I stammered. Sergeant Josie just stared at me. I scorned. She waited. I cleared my throat. She sighed, relenting. It's actually a wonderful story, Ariel, dead accurate, about journeys, resilience, self-discovery, piecing yourself back together after your world has been torn apart. She looked back down to the pages. The dog rolled over and put his paws over his face, telling me just how dumb I'd just been. Okay, I may be slow to understand people sometimes, but I'm not stupid. I felt my stomach roll over with anxiety. After your own sister has acted like she's totally repulsed by you, it's hard not to panic about the possibility of being rejected by a new friend when you goof up. I really like Sergeant Josie. I didn't want to lose her. I had no idea what would be the right thing to say next, so I stared out the window, absentmindedly thumbing through songs on my phone without really thinking about it, or I guess subconsciously wishing George was there to help. I pressed Sir Duke, which uh, Stevie Wonder's tribute to big band legend Duke Ellington. George had arranged it for his marching band, weaving in a wicked cool drumline interlude. Wow, that song wasn't more than a measure or two into the opening trumpet and saxophone fanfare, when the German shepherd woke up, sat up, and lit up. The tip of his tail started slapping the floor and that hint of happiness dogs give right before they really start wagging and squiggling all over with joy. Rushing so the magic of the moment didn't break, I cranked the volume right where Stevie sings. Music is a world within itself with a language we all understand. I jumped up and cheered, yeah boy, good boy. The shepherd started circling me, prancing, barking, his tail going round like a propeller. We were feeling it all over. Just like Stevie Wonder was singing, 
just like I had when George let me honk on his saxophone and introduced me to the soul-filling rapture of music, we had found our song and his name, Duke. Take it away, Barbara. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Ambrose is saying he wants to go. I'm sorry he barked during No, that. no, it's perfect. He's ready to go. Um, so I have been doing freestyle, uh, canine freestyle, for a number of, well, probably 15, 20 years with various dogs of mine. And this is, I'll get out where you can see him. This is Ambrose. Ambrose is a Gordon setter. Um, he is... 11, actually almost 12. He'll be 12 um, at the end of December. So he's an older guy. But one of the things about freestyle, it is a dog sport that you can do with your dog pretty much for their whole life. Um, any kind of dog can do this. We have people who have big dogs, little dogs, um, chihuahuas, Great Danes, <laughs> Rottweilers. I have a new puppy who's a little English Cocker Spaniel who may make a guest appearance uh afterwards but what i was really struck in that passage uh the passages that laura read is how hard it is to find the right music for your dog and different dogs do have different uh ideas about music ambrose not so much although because he's a big guy i use kind of music with heavy beat uh my previous uh freestyle dog neve liked light piano and flute music um, and if it was heavy instrumentation, she didn't like it. I have friends whose dogs won't work if they don't like the music. One of my friends, Whippets, only likes, of all things, only likes flamenco guitar music. I mean, who knew? <laughs> I, who knew? And, uh, and I look at Shari, what the heck are you doing if she played other things? Uh, another friend's dog, if the music has heavy bass, he won't work to it. So dogs do have sensitivity and frequently can tell whether or not they like the music. Some don't care that much, but some of them really do. So I am going to do in a, a minute uh, Ambrose's freestyle routine. Now, normally we do this in a big space, 50 by 40. My space is a little bit smaller. Uh, but we'll try to uh, get so that you can see it. And I don't know, Ashley, if you can put me on the full screen when we do this just so that, you know, you could see a little bit more of the space and of the routine. Yeah, thank you. All right, and so I'm gonna get ready and get Ambrose ready and you can see him. Go ahead. Sir. Can y'all see them?
Bravo. Yeah, so Ambrose hasn't done that routine in a while, but um, he, he remembered most of it. <laughs> so, Thank um, you so much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So what I wanted to talk about is he would like to hear about some training and how to train tricks for your dogs and how to get started in freestyle if it's something you're interested in. As I said, any dog can do it. Doesn't matter if they're big or they're little. You have to find the music that suits your dog. And that is hard. And I spend a lot of time on iTunes trying to find music. And you'll try a piece, and, you know, you don't like it. So you start with some genres of music that you like, and then you start listening to music. Then you play it for the dog, and you want to see, does it suit their rhythm? And so usually we, we sort of trot the dog around in big circles while we're playing the music. And yeah, I know you want to do more. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and then if we see if the dog likes it, if you like it, and you have to like the music too, because otherwise you're, you're going to hear it a million times. And so if you don't like it, you know, it'll be hard to work with. And you can use anything. I, I People use, you know, country music. They use, um, a lot of people use music from soundtracks, you know, like, so if you have a movie that you like, um, you can, that's my in the background with you from the peanut gallery. Just throw the whole thing in there, Kat. Um, and um, so soundtracks, if there's a movie you like, you might find music from that. Um, sometimes you have a favorite artist, and sometimes if you go, you know, not maybe their most popular songs, but, but something else that will fit your dog. Um, so I don't know if anybody has done much training with their own dogs. Um, and I will tell you, it is one of the most bonding things you can do with your dogs is to, to do some training. And Ambrose says there's two here. So one of the things he loves to do is probably his most favorite behavior, which we did several times in the routine. Ambrose, leave it. Thank you. Is his bow. And he would do that bow. All the way. Yes, good boy. And that's actually not a hard behavior to teach. Basically, you have the dog standing, and you take a treat, and you put it at their nose, and you bring it under their chest. Okay? Now, you don't want them to go all the way down, so I should probably give them that too. But if, you, if they kind of look in, they you know, front goes up, front goes down. Not hard to teach? Yes, good boy. So that's an easy one, and many dogs can do it. And it's actually a nice behavior for the dogs because it stretches them out. Even if I'm not competing in freestyle and I'm doing rally, I usually do a few bows before we go into the ring to stretch them out. Okay, now, you saw him do some spins and some lateral moves. And um, I can show you a little bit how to do those if, if you'd like to. Does anybody know if their dog is a lefty or a righty? Left-handed or right-handed? I, I, I can't I, don't know. I can't tell how these answers, but I'll, you know, I'll do the comparison again with horses. Just, I know for instance, when my daughter was working on doing serpentines and circles, horses definitely move to one side better than the other. And I never thought about that they might be left-handed or right-handed. Yeah, they have preferences, not as strongly as we do. Now, Ambrose is pretty ambidextrous. Ambrose, Ambrose spins. And he goes that way, and then this cute together direction world is pretty much equal. Neve definitely preferred to go counterclockwise, so to her left. Rona, I'm seeing, also goes very smoothly to her left, not so smoothly to her right. You can still teach it, bro, spin. Twirl. You know, you can teach both directions, and it's good so your dog doesn't get one-sided. So we like to teach both directions. So that's a, a a good behavior to teach. Okay. Yeah. You want to do some more? <laughs> he does. 
He's like, give me some cookies. All right, so another behavior that we use in training a lot, but for other things, is called targeting or touch, where the dog comes and touches their nose to your hand. It was touch? Yes. Touch, good. And you can use that for different tricks. It was touch. Now, he don't like to jump that much. My female dog, when she was younger, could jump as high as my head, but he will do it. So what you do, if you want to teach this, this is a nice little behavior, is you basically are going to stick the, your hand nice and stiff and flat right in front of the dog's nose. Ambrose, touch. Well, he, he said, Barbara, you have cookies. So I'm going to take them away from it. Touch. Good. And all I want is him to kind of bop my hand with his nose. Froze. Touch. Good boy. And most dogs will want to sniff your hand anyway. Froze. Touch. Yes. Good boy. And he, he likes to do that. He knows he's going to get cookies, and that's fine. But what he likes to do, Froze. Touch. No, no, not that one. He says, I like my bow. I want to throw that in. Close touch. You don't touch, you don't get. And see, that's the beauty of positive training. If he doesn't do the behavior, he just doesn't get the treat. He's not a bad dog. I'm not annoyed with him. I'm not mad at him. He just doesn't get the treat. Touch. Yes, good boy. That was good. So I am a positive, reward-based trainer. I think that, to me, is the most effective way to train dogs. It's the most fun for most dogs too. I mean, what's not to like? You get cookies, you get praise, everyone <laughs> makes a fuss out of you, huh? You like that, huh? So the other behavior he likes to do is what we call laterals. And I know Laura, the horses probably do something. They like do. That, right? It's hard It's hard for them though. That's one of the and hardest moves. Get around. And so I'm just gonna take little steps. Good boy. And then he goes that way. Um, you can also teach them to do it on a platform. Can you hand me that bowl, please? And one of the things we do, bro, over here. Good boy. I have a little bowl. He's got big feet, but he can stand on this. Bro, pause on. Can you get up on this one? No, that's a little too small for me. That's one. There's a box down there in the corner there. You could just get that one. Thanks. So I probably should have made it in front of an author and book people, but this is a bunch of books taped together. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably not what we wanted to, but this this what it is. So I will tell him, pause on, and he stands on it. And then I'll get him to swing around and see how he does yeah. it. Yeah. The box. So yes, you have to teach your dog to want to stand on the box. Rona, my puppy, is just learning that, and we might take her out a little bit. But then see, he will swing around with me. Good boy. Good. What a puppy. And then you can teach him to lateral very easily off the box, on the box, yeah. and he goes, and then I just step him off the box. So that's a, a, a good way to teach lateral. So I can't see the questions, but maybe Ashley, you would have some questions from folks about things that they may want to teach their dogs or how to go about things. Yes, we have one question is, what is your favorite trick to teach a dog? It really depends on the dog and their structure. Ambrose is a big dog, so I'm never going to teach him to sit up and beg, which a lot of people do teach to smaller dogs. But he's very flexible. He, he probably would hurt himself. Um, no. So I do like the bow. Another behavior I like is crawl. This is a good one. We can, I can show you that. And if your dog can do a down, they can do a crawl. 
So what we do, and I'll back up here, so again, so you can see it a little better, is I'm gonna put Ambrose in a down, and then I'm gonna take my tree and move it across the floor. And if he moves even his feet a little bit, I'm gonna reward him and then keep going. Cross, down, and then crawl, crawl. Yeah, so that is a good one. And basically, the tree has to stay on the ground because otherwise they stand up. It does take a fair amount of strength to do that. So it is good exercise for the dog. Cross, down, crawl, crawl. Good boy. So he likes that one. That, that's a fun trick. Now I say crawl for that as a cue. One of my friends says, be sneaky. <laughs> be sneaky. So I like that behavior a lot because it is, it takes advantage of knowing a good down. If your dog doesn't down, you know, they can't do that one. Um, I, I think all dogs should learn to spin both directions because they think it is good for them physically. Again, he oh, Rose, he says, I really want to do something else. Um, so any other questions about training? Actually, I have one. Can you hear me, Barbara? Yeah. Um, when you are going into competition, which I know you've done some of, are there um, certain prescribed moves you need to yes. incorporate? So I actually, there are a number of different freestyle organizations. I actually go through the Canine Freestyle Federation. That's the group that I'm involved in and I'm an instructor with them. And we have a local chapter in North Carolina called the Carolina Canine Freestyle Guild. And I just think we have big events in Winston-Salem. So I have to give a shout out to the Winston-Salem Dog Training Club. Yes. Uh, great. They have a lot of really good freestylers there. If you're interested, if you live in that area, you know, you certainly can go to them. We also, pre-pandemic, we were doing classes at the Durham Kennel Club in Durham, and some people are doing them other places. Um, so our form of freestyle has four different levels. And the first two levels, one is on leash, one is off leash. And the, the requirements are pretty basic. They have to heal on the left side and the right side. You saw me switching Ambrose. They have to do either serpentines or circles or spirals. You saw me do some spirals with him. Um, there's a change of pace from fast to slow. They have to do some pivots. You saw me do some pivots with him. Um, one is on leash and one is off leash. So you don't have to have a ton of training on the, the base, you know, to get into basic levels, but you do have to have a dog who heals and is well, you know, reasonably well behaved. Um, the more advanced levels, they do the laterals, like you saw Ambrose doing. You saw me do some backing with him when he was at my side and backed up in heel. Um, at the more advanced level, you have to do distance work where the dog does behaviors far away from you. Um, yeah, there is, and, and as you advance through the levels, every behavior they can do on the left, they have to be able to do on the right. Yeah. Have a fully trained dog. Also, the lengths of the routine get longer. In the beginning level, um, your routine only has to be a minute and a half or so. Yeah. By the the advanced level, the fourth level, your routine is like three to four minutes long. So you have to really train and work hard. And I know in the book, Ariel says like how hard it is. Like it was harder to train a routine than she thought, and it is. Know, you try things and then you have your friends look at it and they say no that doesn't look so good you know or you don't like it or a lot of times we have people video our routines when we're practicing and we say yeah that doesn't look as good as I thought like it, it was so we, we throw that out and we come up with other things so it does take some practice but the beginning levels are you know are easier and it's easier to enter into that so if you go to canine hyphen freestyle.org, you can find out about the requirements for our group. And if you go to Canine Freestyle Federation Facebook page, Canine Freestyle Federation Facebook page, uh, and look under all videos, there, there's probably a dozen videos of different routines, including an old one of me with me, which I think you saw. Yes, Laura. yes, that's how I found you. <laughs> 
that yet. And then they have all the way through more advanced routines and including brace routines where people work with two dogs at once. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. So that's that's sort of the setup with different requirements. You know, there's also for people who are interested on my website, I have some videos um, of the Crufts uh, dog show competition. Yeah. Where, oh my goodness, how elaborate are those things, right? Yeah, those are very sophisticated. Those dogs are trained to a very, very high right. level, um, and the routines are very complicated. They do use costumes and props in their routines. My organization does not use costumes or props. And I have always promised my dogs they will never have to wear a dress. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know I know the dogs in, in uh, Ariel's little chorus, they wore all glorious clothes. Yes, it was, yeah. like I said, mine's a little quirky and whimsical. <laughs> You know, Ambrose, when we, we were in, for many years, I coached the dog drill team where we would march in the parades and do tricks yeah. and things like that. And the dogs wore bandanas, which matched our our shirts, but we never made them dress up. So, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think dogs are beautiful the way they are. They don't they are. to dress yeah. up. Ambrose's yeah. coat is, is lovely and, you know, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know, with the... Uh, uh, with the book, it was as kind of uh, imaginative and quirky individuality as you know as possible, but in, in great fun. Like but, to wear outfits. Some dogs like to wear outfits. Well, you know, it is funny. I was kind of stunned when I started watching Crufts and y'all. If you want to see, um, you know, people who are doing this to the most elaborate level and very British, right? Yes. I mean, their costumes and oh my goodness, oh, that's really elaborate. Crufts. Beautiful, beautiful, and very well trained dogs. I yes, mean, yeah. seriously well trained dogs. Yeah. Do we have dog people there who want to ask about your individual dogs and what you might want to train? How Barbara might be able to give you some quick advice? Yeah. How much time do we have? We are good. We have a few. We still have a few more minutes. If anyone has a question, just pop it in the bottom or um, in the chat. Laura, we do have a question for you. Um, if you want to while we're waiting for sure. more questions um have you started working on another book and if so can you tell us a little bit about it i'm just smiling because i don't know that if you realize that you're reverberating and repeating it you sound like the wizard of oz <laughs> oh no i did not know i'm sorry <laughs> no 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 it's just it sounded like i'm on deadline right now so that voice even sounded more like ah. um <laughs> I just actually, yes, I've been incredibly lucky. I've been working on two things, very, very different from this. Um, I have a book coming out in August about the Berlin Wall. If any of you all read Suspect Red, it's set up like that. It's about two boys on opposite sides of the situation of the Berlin Wall going up. And I am right now writing something for my editor, Catherine Teagan, the marvelous and amazing and brilliant Catherine Teagan who edited this um, about it's a World War II, another World War II um, narrative uh, home front takes place in Virginia and um, it's about a young girl about Ariel's age and actually it's a really interesting experience for me because I'm incorporating this southern voice of Ariel in a historical narrative um, and it is uh, takes place in Tywald, Virginia during the time that the Nazi U-boats were just kind of laying waste to um, shipping it to the merchant marines and this young girl trying to deal with that. And it's been a really fascinating project. And um, I'm on chapter 10, so I'm really enjoying writing that. Its tentative title is Louisa June and the Nazis in the Waves. So. Any other questions? That sounds great. We can't wait for that. It's, it is a little known chapter uh, in our history right after Pearl Harbor occurred. Um, it sent five, just five U-boats, but they were taking down a boat a day for six months on the, in North Carolina coast, Outer Banks to Norfolk and up to um, uh, Rehoboth Beach area, the Dover area. 
Yeah. Well, we can't wait to hear learn more about that. That's exciting. Thank you. We do, we do have another dog question. Sure. And it's, what is the hardest trick to train? Well, a lot of tricks are multiple um, piece tricks. Um, I think getting dogs to pick up things and carry them and, you know, bring them to you. For some dogs, that's very hard. Now, for Rona, my puppy, that's not hard at all. But for a dog who's not a, a retrieving breed or a sporting breed, that can be very difficult. Um, some dogs have trouble with rollover. Again, it's a handedness thing. Do they want to roll in one direction or the other? Um, and, you know, it really depends on the dog. So one of the things I try to do when I'm training Rona, my puppy, is break it down into little pieces. You know, if you try to do the completed trick, sometimes that's too hard. But if you break it down into little pieces, what we call successive approximation, mm -hmm. can I get a little way there? Can I get a little more, a little more, a little more? Generally, you can get most tricks. The important thing, and I do want to make this point, is the trick has to be safe. Um, this is a rubber floor, so it's good. It's really mm -hmm. hard to do tricks on like a, a tile floor, a wooden floor, because the dog may slip. And if you have a young dog under a year, please don't do any jumping tricks with them because that could really hurt their joints. Once they're over a year, then you could do jumping tricks. But I would not do that with my puppy. My veterinarian would have a fit. <laughs> so, yeah. If anyone wants to see my puppy, I can show you what I'm teaching her. I want to see the puppy. Okay. <laughs> yes, we definitely want to see the puppy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she's getting her puppy grace. My dog is usually all over me, the fact that she's being so quiet. This is Gracie. She is a rescue dog. If any of you all want a dog, trust, all my dogs have been rescues. I've had eight of them. And they are, this one has been, um, was really traumatized. I was her fourth person in less than two years. So it's taken her a long time to even really look me in the face. Um, I have to tell you that, but now you do it all the time. Um, I have to tell you that if you really, if you want a dog, there are rescue dogs desperate to be taken home and they will love, 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 love you because they're so grateful to have a home. All right. Oh, beautiful Gracie. Yes, I do <laughs> love the setters. So yeah. we have a puppy here and I'm going to bring her out. And her name is Rona, R-H-O-N-A. Oh, she's so pretty. Cocker, <laughs> and she will be nine months on Tuesday. She's a bit silly, you know. She is a puppy, but she's learning. So one of the things I am teaching her, which I would, would not teach my big dog, is to sit up in bed. So I want her to keep her rear end on the ground, but bring her feet up. And just yes, good girl. So her. Front paws come up. You can do it. Yes. Good girl. And again, it's really important to do this on a good surface. Sit. Yes. Good girlie. Good girl. And you hear me say yes to her. I'm marking the paper telling her she did it right and the treat is coming. And she also likes to target. Run a touch. Yes. Good girlie. Run Touch. Yes. She's doing that better than Ambrose. See, Ambrose? She's a puppy is doing that better. Touch. Good girl. <laughs> and she is learning her spins. So she likes to go lefty. She can go right, but not, see, not as well. You see, it, she doesn't do as well. So what yeah. I'm doing with her is if she goes even a little bit, I'll give her a treat. And then a little more. I'll give her a treat and a little more. And eventually she'll do it as smoothly. Well, Rona, over here. She'll do it as smoothly. Barbara, we have someone asking what kind of treats you're feeding them. Okay, so I, I cut up and cooked some hot dogs this morning for them. Uh, so that's mostly what they're getting. But I do have commercial <laughs> treats, um, you know, that you can buy at the pet store. Another big hit in my house is spring cheese that they really like the string cheese. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, you know, you, you have to vary the food. I mean, Ambrose is so foodie. He would work for stale Cheerios if I can't eat it. I actually think if I cut up cardboard in little bits and present it to him, he would eat them. <laughs> you know, so um, it depends on your dog. Some dogs are more picky than others. So I usually have a variety of treats. And because if I'm doing a training session and they get bored, I want to switch up my treats. You know, I, I would never try this with Gracie because it's been so hard to get her to learn basic things. Yeah. But she is, she's not food driven at all. Interesting. At all. Better because usually they are. Um, have you tried hot dogs or cheese? No, but cheese. I have discovered the string cheese recently. I'll try hot dogs. Yeah, I usually just cut them up in little pieces and then I microwave them to get the grease off of them. Yeah. And, okay. And, um, th that may do it for her. Okay. I won't yeah. try that. I'm just trying to get her to come. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, that's, that's important. Yes, you know, and she's getting better. It really, it's she, it, this is a totally different kind of conversation about rescue dogs. But as you know, I mean, it takes a long time for them, some, some, some of them, to come to trust you, you know, and that's really so been. Depends what has happened to them before they came to you, you know, and I did. I uh, work at a shelter for many years in Orange County in Chapel Hill, and we would get in a lot of setters that were gun shy, and the hunters would just abandon them. Yes. They yes. wouldn't hunt. And so they were always very sensitive. Yeah. Yes, very. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. sweet. You know, if, if anybody, this is, I'm sorry, we're getting off on a tangent here, but if you all like these, the Gordon setter, and, and this, she's an English setter or a Llewellyn. They all they they can they can come from like really gunshine and all that, but they they're they're trained and bred to really attach to their people. Yeah. And I have to say, female setters are the most loyal, loving, yeah. and often smart. But boy, the, when they attach to you, they really do. Anyway. Okay, very good. So yeah. I don't know if there are any other questions. Uh, I'm gonna come. Oh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. No, we do not have any more questions. Oh, wait. I spoke too soon. Um, we have one last question, and then we are going to have uh, Laura close us out with um, another reading. But the question is, my friend is allergic to shedding dogs. What kind do you recommend, Barbara? Uh, a Havanese is non-shedding. Uh, they're uh, about um, 15 pounds. They're very sweet, um, loving. They come in all different colors. I've worked with a lot of them. A lot of them go on to be therapy dogs because they have very nice personalities. So that is one of my favorite non-shedding breeds, Havanese, H-A-V-A-N-E-S-E. -E. Um, and they're, they're, they're adorable and they're really sweet. All right, well, Laura, if you want to take it away. I don't want to leave, but, you know. It was <laughs> no, we could do this all afternoon. This is so great. So thank you so much for organizing it, Ashley. So what I'm going to read is I'm just doing a really brief little three-minute read, but I, I hope it's a celebration of what can happen after you do a lot of practice and you really, you know, work hard on a routine. Um, so uh, Sergeant Josie has kept Duke at her cabin until the day of the parade, and Ariel has been training her. So um, for the past few weeks, I climbed the blooming hills to heaven. Music, dance, and a dog who came alive with happiness when he saw me. Every day, Duke and I had practice, chiseling away clumsiness and hesitation. Since we no longer needed to count out rhythms, our dance routine was second nature, poetry and motion. The song had seeped into our souls and become our heartbeat. We were in complete sync with the melody and each other. If you've never seen a parade live, Felt the street throb and your heart pulse in rhythm with the passing bands, drum cadence, then swept up in all the colors and the confetti and the celebration. Promise yourself to do it before you die. Better yet, march in one. As soon as we reached the parade start point and fed into that stream of music and excitement, we all came alive. Duke and I marched right in front of Sergeant Josie's truck, like George leading his band. And just like George, Duke strutted confidently. Armed with music, he seemed to have no fears. He was invulnerable. Me? I made myself stop thinking. I had an hour of happy ahead of me. 
For one hour, I was going to live a philosophy from one of my favorite quotes. Live, I'm sorry, love as if no one had ever hurt me. Dance as if there was no one out there to judge me. Live as if this moment was a little bit of heaven right here on earth. Stevie Wonder's lyrics about the power of music to envelop and move us filled the street. You can feel it all over. Walk, spin, stop, shake, circle, serpentine, kick, bow. We were marching at the parade's tail end after the more serious floats and city hall dignitaries had long passed by. After the queen and the princesses, after the fire trucks, after the flight and drone corps, the circle clown, the circus clowns and the Harley Davidsons. So the crowd was loosened up and pumped to have some fun. Walk, spin, stop, shake, circle, serpentine, kick, bow. I was vaguely aware of a sea of people clapping and cheering and realized that all their faces were smiling. They were watching us and keeping the beat with us. I couldn't believe it. And yet I had evidently created something epic, something wondrous, a straight from the heart outcry, something bursting with joy, no matter how people had labeled me in the past. I heard, oh, look at the Fred Astaire dog. Oh my God, he can dance. Mommy, can we teach Spot to dance too? Then the crowd actually began singing along in unison. We can feel it all over. It was beyond sweet. By the time we reached the grandstand, we had two dozen dogs and their owners trailing us. Old and young, tall, short, graceful, gangly, dignified, ridiculous. They did their own versions of the twist, the Macarena, the Pony, the Polka. One woman even did the bump, that silly 70s dance, crashing her bottom against her Great Dane side every other step. Another woman tried some Irish step dance, her red setter nipping at her feet. All I can say is there have to be a lot of frustrated dancers out there in the world, people who are dying to express themselves, to let out their creativity in whatever way they can. I'd never imagined that my little moment of flight could nudge others into testing their own wings. So you guys go out, dance with your dogs, write to us. We will be applauding you and can hardly wait to see your creativity. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. This was so great. Barbara, oh. thank you. <laughs> yes, for an Ambrose and Rona, thank you. Um, if you have not picked up your copy of Storm Dog yet, we do have signed book plates at the store. You can purchase by clicking the button at the bottom of the screen. Um, oh, I just, I love any any story that, that sees someone finding their place. Thank you for bringing us this story. And Barbara, thank you for sharing this world with us. Um, this was just a, a wonderful way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. There are some links on the side of the Storm Dog web page has just a fantastic list of resources, whether it's a playlist or a book list or book some list. way to learn more about K9 Freestyle. Um, it's all there. I hope you will check it out and I hope you will choose to join us another time for another interesting event. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank we appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Ken.